not here yet. She's teaching until 5.30, so um, see her rushing in. Uh, welcome to this event uh, where we're going to be thinking about using languages as a resource for teaching and learning. Um, tonight we have Sandile Takati, who's going to be talking on behalf of the South and Juniors. And juniors. Uh, Marile, um, they're both from the Department of Economics um, and they've been experimenting with using um, what's called translanguaging um, as a strategy for teaching and learning. Uh, after that, Lalu uh, Seluani Mukuku from the Drama Department uh, will talk about a production that she directed with her students called, now I'm going to try very hard here, Pizzo Ia Lironiana, which, if Google served me well, means bird call. Uh, and this was a production about um, translanguaging, and it was, it was done um, exclusively in Southern Sutu. So she was hoping to have her students here, uh, but unfortunately they can't come, so she's going to uh, take us through the process of that production and what she uh, is Lalu, uh, and what she and her students learned through the process. Um, I want to, at the outset, thank Anthea Adams. Uh, she's my colleague in Churchill, and she's a member of the Language Committee um, and was responsible for organizing this event. One of the roles of Churchill um, is, well, actually the major role of Churchill, is the um, is academic staff development, uh, and it's about facilitating academics' development as teachers. Um, and as part of that role, we are uh, encouraging academics to use languages, uh, all the um, eleven languages, but in particular uh, Isikosa and Afrikaans, uh, alongside English, because these are the languages. Uh, of the Eastern Cape. Um, so our role is to um, develop with um, academics uh, in departments strategies to um, utilize different languages in the classroom. And it's also to, again, with our colleagues in departments, disseminate information about using uh, strategies related to um, related to uh, different languages. So I'm very pleased to see all of you here tonight, um, and I trust that it will be um, you know, good use of your time. Uh, we're very well aware that there are a number of things happening this week on campus, um, and in particular also um, it is uh, Diversity Week, or no, Disability Week. Disability week. Um, and there is an event around Disability Week starting at 7 o'clock, and so we're hoping um, to finish here by about quarter to 7. Uh, we advertise this event as ending at 7 o'clock, but in recognition of um, the other event, we'll, we'll end a bit earlier. And with that, I... Do you want to say something before I go and sit down? No, it's fine, Jane. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Moduani. Sanubonani. So, my name is Sandy Parati. I'm from the Economics Department. So, today I will be presenting on using other languages other than English as a medium of communication in classes, tutorials, and ATP. So, the topic of the presentation is if two languages say the same thing, it is not the same thing. So we're going to look at dilemmas in the light of multilingualizing economics. So basically, learning how different words functions in different languages is exciting. Because um, this is basically a proverb, which simply means that um, language or words that are spoken actually carries a lot of knowledge or meaning, which is embedded based on people's experiences could be due to culture, identity, religion, and so forth. So um, in Economics 101, we came 
up with this initiative and it is called Multilingual Pedagogical Practice Initiative. So basically, these are our team members, which is Prof. Jens Noble in our economics department, and we also work in collaboration with Ms. Sison Gemawonga from Extended Studies and Sanele, and also with Prof. Masebo from African Languages, because we have to get expert on how to use other languages as a medium of teaching. So basically, what driven me to even consider this is that when I joined Rhodes in 2017, and one of my students in 2017 came to me after class and said, I am lost. I am not learning in class. I don't understand, and I can't engage. And I was like, why? And he, she said that I was taught in Isikosa. English meant everything. Where I'm coming from was taught in Isikosa. And I was like, OK. So the question that came, what should we do in such cases? Should I send the student away? It is not my fault. Go and find other alternative, alternative ways for you to cope. To me, being driven by individualized consideration, I took that and considered myself, if I were that student, how would I feel? And that is driven by compassion. We have to have compassion for our students and help them in breaking the codes, because there are a lot of codes that they have to break at the university level in order for them to fall and join the tribe. And one of the most important thing is the motivation to serve. I always tell my students in class that I'm here to serve you. Use me. I'm getting paid. It is because of you. So come to my office. If you want to ask questions, I'm from KZN. and I can speak Isuzulu and Siposa. Just come and ask me your home language. Don't worry about English. So that is driven by the motivation to serve, to see students to be successful. And I'm not ignorant that it has to be integrative. I cannot really help students on my own. So it has to be something that we have to do as a department. So um, with, uh, in addressing that, when the student approached me, because I believe she approached me because she believed that I was going to be able to assist her, what I immediately started doing is that I had to offer her classes in my office we're in a space that it was me and her, and we'll be able to explain more things in Kosa and it's Isuzulu. So basically, I was translating economics concept using examples that talk to or relate to the student past experiences. And after that, I realized that after class, a few other students would come to me, ma'am, I don't understand this graph. Can you explain it to me? And sometimes you can easily pick up when a student is trying to talk English and that now. And I'm like, no, and then I'll try to talk into course, and then automatically the student will change. I'm like, OK, this is what it means that I will use this course or either language. But what I recognize, especially from these students, that in economics, it's large class, and we've got repeat lectures. So I will have to do the repeat lectures, and again offer her another lectures, which again was which means in a day I had to offer her, I mean three repeat lectures, and for me it was increasing. The workload was too much. I couldn't cope. So basically, students struggle with English as a language of instruction and basically in the discipline of the faculty of commerce. So what I suggested that then in our department, I mean our staff meeting is that. Um, when we are selecting tutors, it's better for us to check the demographics of the student who actually enrolled, so that when we are selecting tutors, we also cater for their needs. So basically, this is first of I mean um, the research that we did to just to get a uh, demographic of the student who are actually enrolled for economics 101. So. Uh, this was the result that most of the students, other than those who speak English, are the Kosa and Tisuri. And for me, those are the only language of which I can communicate with. So it was relatively not easy for me to help them, but I can say that the majority of students benefited. So basically, what are then the plans of this initiative? So we plan to use translanguaging in some ATP workshop. And we also, this is more of Prof. Jen Snowball, she's more into technology, then she will use podcasts made by tutors or staff in economics, one student themselves explaining some key concepts. And the third point, I think, no, it's the fourth point, the use of other techniques in lectures to encourage students to use their home language to understand concepts and ideas. So basically, when I introduce a new concept in my class, for example,
example, let's say I will introduce, um, uh, let's say, wealth. So I will let okay, today we are going to learn about wealth, or today we are going to learn about utility. Then I will start. Where I'm coming from, uh, we define wealth as umnoto. And then I will say, turn to your neighbor. Can you turn to your neighbor even right now? Can you explain to the person next to you what is wealth in your own language? Wow. <laughs> 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 I mean, exchange knowledge, and then I will randomly pick anyone from class. I'll be like, can you tell us well, how do you define probability utility or any concept that I'm introducing? Then whether I should speak Shona, I will not understand. But I would be like, okay. Then after he or she has explained, I would like anyone who speaks shorter in the room, they will raise hand and I will ask, do you agree with him or her? And then they will say yes or no. If no, then how can we better explain? So basically that's how I introduce some key concepts so that at least student has a golden block that is key so that they can actually understand the meaning of what I am introducing. So basically, um, this what happened before, before then, is that we planned a meeting with Economics 101 members and the teaching team and the Translanguaging Research and Practitioner. So then they told us about advantages and disadvantages on how to go about during this project. So also tutors attended a Translanguaging Workshop and Demonstration Lecture in Semester 1. And we had Ms. Sison Geshi gave also a lecture in Economics 101 on why do we really need to introduce such initiative. Other students were reluctant, they were like, we are trying to replace English as a medium of exchange when they are joining labor force, what is going to happen to them? And I was like, guys, we have a lot of challenges in South Africa. And at the university level, we have this challenge. A student come to class, she has been taught for, I mean, 10 years in Sikosa. Then how do we address such a situation? We should look at this in this way. We are simply trying to improve your understanding, not because we are trying to replace English as a medium of exchange or something, but it's basically to improve. We are not saying that in an exam you write in Sikosa or in Suzuki, no. But if you can conceptualize the key concepts in your own native language, then it will be better for you to understand moving forward. So, um, so this is also what happened in terms of our in, in our department. As I did when I, I first introduced myself, I would bring students in various languages because obviously I can't. I mean, I mean, I mean, um, lecture them in various languages other than it's a Kosa or it's a Zulu. So for those who I can't, I would just say Deb, Muluini, or whatever, and then they would just laugh. And what I've noticed in class is that students even feel comfortable to ask questions, even if they don't understand how to ask them in, in English. So someone would just raise hand, ma'am, what do you mean about expenses? I'll be like, oh, okay, I mean this. And from that, the lesson that I learned is that let us not use, I mean, bombastic words as lectures. Try to be simple as possible. Instead of using vital, why not use important? Because now we have to take into consideration about our student demographic. We have to know who we really teach. So there are a lot of things that we take for granted of which students really struggle with. And they will come and ask you like simple world and be like, why am I using this? So whenever now I'm teaching, I go back and I'm like, okay, let me replace this word with this word and so forth so that the student benefit because actually students will come to class and when they actually learn something. So even our notice, in terms of our notice that we do on our course website, our secretary will greet student in two, I mean, or post, I mean, when there's something that needs to be posted, it would be both in English and it's because, as you can see. And this is what we have been doing so far. Uh, these are some of the extra from our glossary, which have been made by tutors. So basically, we translate using English, is to process in the better and teach chicho. Chicho, and I'm sure that is. Um, so, so that students can really engage and understand. And sometimes it is really hard to replace some of the key economic concepts. So what we do then is we offer examples. This is the meaning of the word. But moving forward, as English was 
developed. I believe that we also need to, collabor to collaborate and come up with concepts which will facilitate our student learning and learning progress. So, this is from Economics 102, which is taught by Professor Jen Snowball. So this is a live student post where she will post something that she will do in class and then she will ask in various, I mean, languages, how do you define, I mean, um, in this case, they were explaining inflection and then Jen posted this and asked, how do you define inflection in your own language? And then student replied here, who could, uh, in Siswati, when you go in and so the student will, integrate and then in, in that process knowledge is exchanged and created of which is that what we want and this is the cause evaluation that we did to evaluate whether this initiative is really working or not so the first question asks whether the lectures um, the lectures use this language which I can understand. So um, about 45% of students, as we can see, has said that they strongly agree that we use some um, languages that we can understand. But what is most interesting is that having some course information provided in Isikosa as well as English help me to learn. So about, I mean, 14 plus uh, 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 strongly agree that they actually benefit from using other languages. And just to share this experience, while I was invigilating, I mean, in the past week when they were writing, I mean, subs, some of the students left a lot of questions blank. And I was like, what is going on? Why didn't you answer this question? And the student said, ma'am, I don't understand. What is the meaning of this question? So the question was simply saying, compare output and price between monopoly and perfect competition. I was like, why don't you understand here? Like, I don't understand what the question is saying. I'm like, the question is saying, Katani's e price from monopoly to perfect competition. So simply compare monopoly and perfect competition in terms of price and output, in terms of um, market structure, so for all of that. I was like, why don't you understand? And when I explained in Isizuru or in Sikosa, they were like, oh, ma'am, and then they started writing, writing, I was like, oh, God. So I, I really believe that it's not that students are ignorant sometimes. They really don't understand. And another, I mean, experience that I have is that one of the students came to me, okay, she, he performed very bad in, her, in his assignment one and two. Then he came to me when he was about to submit his second assignment. I was like, and then I'm submitting my, my first assignment. I was like, okay, show me what you have done. And then he showed me his assignment. I was like, tell me, give me the course outline. What is the course outline you require of this assignment? I read the question. I read what the student have attempted to do. I was like, did you understand the question? And he was like, yes, yes, I did. What was the question saying? And I was like, but this is not what you have written here. I was like, the question is saying that and that. Then I translated back into the course. I was like, yo, man, I'm so sorry. And from there, the semester, I'm not involved in one or two, but he came again. Ma'am, can you again read and please comment on my work before I submit the final? I was like, yeah, sure I can. But then we explain to you what the question again is saying. Then I started doing that in Sikosa, in Susu. And it really helps, it improves because, yeah, language is not our mother tongue. And even in class, I, also, I always tell my students, I'm also coming from that background. I'm going to share with you my past experiences and I'm going to share with you on how I managed to overcome, but it's not an easy process. You have to work and you have to work hard. Then sometimes I would give students just no, I mean, books, just go and read this textbook. This will help you. And even when they're writing to you emails, you could even see they don't know when to use ease or where well, like really it is painful. It is painful and something has to be done. So, despite the available funding, even some students in class and also tutors were reluctant to use, I mean, translanguaging in tutorials or to make podcasts, simply because others are not confident and they, they think that if they can ask questions in Susan or Zikosa, then you are not smart enough. And I always remind my students that you made it here to university, which means there is something in you. It's just a matter of the challenges that we have to help you overcome. 
So basically, the, the, the problem is economic terminologies, confidence, dominance of English in low wage market. The question is, how can I explain your classical economies in Sikos I even don't know. So you have to think, and sometimes, yeah, it's a lot of work. So this is some of the long question 471. What do you think of the use of multiple languages of some courses content and how can it be improved and expanded? Showed a diversity of response. So out of 162 comments, one of five students felt positive about the initiative. Several students mentioned that they were pleased to see a departmental dedication to transformation and some mentioned it served a good mechanism to motivate cross-cultural understanding of which we also need is to share and exchange information and include our students in that creation of knowledge. So to conclude, there is really a potential to make the university a more open, transform learning environment. And what is really required is that we need to be capacitated. We need a workshop on how can we really make use of other languages other than English. And there are smaller and low cost interventions that we can start as this one, but then it requires time. Do we have that time? We don't have that time, but we are here to save our students. So, thank you.